Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven, and in today's video, I would like to introduce you to one of my favorite um, loop components, uh, something called Table of Contents. I actually wish we had this, uh, you know, functionality in SharePoint. I wish we had Table of Contents uh, web part in SharePoint, uh, but uh, for now, we just have it in loop. Uh, so let me introduce you to this wonderful uh, component. So uh, look, um, here I am in Microsoft Loop, obviously, and uh, one of the pages I have, and this is like an employee onboarding page. I have some text, I have some loop components, you know, tasks, you know, tables, you know, Kanban board, you know, etc. And uh, look, it's a pretty long page, right? Pretty long page, lots of you know stuff in here. Uh, however, uh, when let's say new users make it to this page, I really want them, you know, to kind of quickly see what's available, what to expect on this page. Luckily, we have a way to do so, and uh, all you need to do is type in, uh, you know, table of contents, right? The, uh, you know, essentially the loop component you need to choose uh, is table of contents. So let me do that, and then I will explain to you how it works. So here we go. Look at this. All of the sudden now, all of the sudden now, I have uh, essentially, um, you know, the whole table of contents, all right? So I can quickly jump to, uh, you know, the different sections. So for example, you know, what I want to read on training, you know, here we go, it brings me to that particular section. Let me explain to you uh, how this is built, what it relies on and why it looks like, you know, the way uh, it does. So it pretty much uh, relies on headings. I actually I explained to you what headings are uh, in uh, you know in one you know one of my you know previous uh, videos. Uh, but uh, we have two types of headings in a loop. We have the static heading, which is what you see over here, H1, H2, H3. All right, and just a way for you to kind of uh, organize and visually you know separate content. And we have uh, the collapsible heading. It's the one that allows you to pretty much organize uh, your content uh, and expand as necessary. So it doesn't overwhelm the users. Uh, now, here's another thing that's super interesting and important. Uh, when you add other loop components like, you know, task list, you know, voting table, Kanban board, it automatically creates this as a heading as well. And what it means is that it's also part of um, you know, essentially, it's also part of um, the table of contents. It relies on those headings as well. Uh, and uh, let me actually, let's go to this Kanban board. Um, you know, when I added this Kanban board, um, obviously by default it added it as a heading, but it was one of the static headings. I actually changed it to the collapsible, you know, heading. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's a collapsible heading. I, make, I can expand, you know, collapse my um, uh, component as necessary, and it picks up on that as well. So it doesn't really matter whether you, um, you know, uh, whether you, um, uh, you know, created a static heading or collapsible heading. It relies on them all, and it creates the link. So essentially, the key to building table of contents, if you just have like you know, regular text and, you know, it's just a body, you know, regular paragraph text, it's not a heading, it's not going to be part of the table of contents. So super, super important. It only picks up on H1, H2, H3 headings, and it picks up on both static and collapsible headings. Now, you might also be wondering why, you know, the table of contents looks like the way it does over here, right? You can see some uh, you know, links to different sections, and then some of them like appear indented uh, like this, right? Why is it the case? There are two things that determine that, all right? Very, very important. There are two things that determine, you know, kind of the look and feel of your table of contents. So, um, you know, the first thing that uh, determines whether it's going to be in indented or not is uh, the type of, um, uh, or the size, I should say, of the heading. So look, I'm using H1 here, and I'm using H1 here as well. So they kind of appear on the same, you know, on the same um, level. Uh, however, if I make this, uh, you know, heading, uh, I'm going to convert it to H2, 
look at this, immediately it is indented. So it picks up on, you know, obviously H1 will be the highest, then H2, and then H3, all right? So very, very important. So it does pick up on the size of the heading, so it does matter. Even though it's not indented on the page, here it is, because again, it assumes that H1 will be on top, H2 will be kind of inside of H1 and so on, all right? So let me uh, return this to the original state, just like that. So the first thing that determines whether it's going to, be, to appear indented is the fact, you know, what type of uh, heading you use. The second thing uh, that determines that is whether or not you physically indent that section. So look, I do want to keep it as H2, but you know what? I actually want to increase indent for this one. So I'm going to do something like this. So you see, I kept it as H2, um, I'm sorry, as H1, but I did physically indent it in here, so it's you know kind of easier for me to organize my sections here. But look what happened here in the table of contents. So it's still, it's still, uh, you know, uh, picked up on that. And even though those are the same H1 headings, uh, it did physically indent it in here. So these are the two things that determine that. All right, and you can of course have multiple levels. So let me actually, you know what, I'll uh, actually increase indent here and let's do one more. You see what I'm doing? It's almost like this accordion style, right? You know, this one is inside of this one and inside of this one. Um, it did the same thing. It did reflect it in the table of contents as well. So pretty powerful, pretty powerful functionality. All right, uh, and again, as mentioned earlier, it does pick up on both collapsible, you know, uh, headings and static uh, headings. So definitely, definitely take advantage of that. So I definitely recommend this. And I, like I said in the beginning, I wish we had this functionality in SharePoint, you know, because SharePoint pages, you know, have a tendency to be, you know, um, uh, pretty long in terms of content, lots of widgets, lots of text. And, you know, we do have um, the same heading kind of capability. Uh, and uh, collapsible sections in SharePoint. So hopefully we'll have table of contents web part in SharePoint at some point as well. But for now, we do have it in loop. Uh, and uh, that's what I wanted to show you today. So hopefully you learned something new today. As always, happy to see you on my blog, sharepointmaven.com, as well as my YouTube channel. Goodbye.